Howdy y'all, I am Trisha Texas Lady. Welcome to my channel. And here is my cream, sweet cream or sweet corn casserole. So, uh, my chicken and rice with almond. I got 14 little circles out of this. And here we are. I forgot on my plate. Oh my gosh, so delicious. Hot, delicious, isn't that cute? And there, that's the finished one. I wish I had videotaped in there. Howdy everyone, this is Trisha, Texas Lady. Welcome to my channel. Tonight I'm gonna to be making some pasta carbonara. That is a pasta dish that is traditional in Italy. It is uh, very simple. It can be expensive to make. You can go the inexpensive route. I'm sure you'll get a nice, delicious meal. I am going somewhere in the middle towards the expensive, uh, but not, you know, because I couldn't really find the exact top ingredients that I wanted in my grocery store. Uh, it's starting to collect some nice items in, in there. They're, they're growing really nicely in my grocery store, but there are some things that uh, we still don't have because basically down here is basically Mexican tradition and some uh, Texas barbecue, Tex-Mex cooking style. So we're, we are just sort of sort of embracing other dishes where we've expanded. We've got a sushi bar in there. We've got some nice uh, choices for Asian meals and some for some Italian, but we don't have quite the nice traditional or the expensive items that we need for to make a tra real traditional meal. So this is what you're going to need. We're going to it's pasta carbonara. So you need some pasta. I wanted some thick spaghetti. I couldn't find any thick spaghetti. There was coupons. Buy one get one free. The whole spaghetti section was completely empty. So I couldn't find it in any other brand for whatever reason. I don't know. It was just a thin one and I don't want the thin one. So I went ahead and I went for linguine because after all it is a pasta carbonara, not a spaghetti carbonara. So let's just call it that. Okay, so this is a 12 ounce package. And that 12 ounce package, I am going to cook it in some water. And I'm just going to add some water. I'm not going to add any oil. I know you've a lot of you have heard you add oil to the water to boil your pasta. But you know what? I grew up just making it with water, a little bit of salt, throw the pasta in, cover it, eight to 10 minutes, it was done. And lately I've been hearing, oh, you gotta add some olive oil into the water so the pasta doesn't stick. Well, yeah, if you throw your pasta in one big old bunch, it might stick, but if you move it around and then cover it, it'll be fine. Okay, so we don't have to put any oil in it, and I found out that traditional cooks in Italy do not put oil in, their, in the water to boil it. You're just wasting the oil, don't waste it. Save it for after you've drained it. And then add a little bit of oil to flavor your pasta. That's not always nice. And it'll help like um, whatever ingredients you add to it, say some Parmesan cheese or some garlic or whatever you add to it, it'll help that stick to your pasta. Now, if you're gonna just drain it all out, it's gonna run out with the water, so it's not gonna do you any good to do that. So let's just not do that, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is you're going to need a Parmesan cheese. Uh, you could use some other type of cheeses, but a Parmesan cheese is pretty much a traditional cheese to use. And I bought uh, these wedges. These are um, five ounce wedges. So all together, I have 10 ounces of Parmesan cheese that I need to shred. And I'm gonna use eight ounces, which is close to a cup. It's not really, it's more like a half a cup. And um, so I'm gonna use that to put into my meal as I'm cooking it. And the other part, I'm probably gonna use half of that in my meal and the rest of it I'm gonna use it to garnish on top. So go ahead and just grate yourself some Good Parmesan cheese, this is some nice Parmesan cheese. Um, again, that's going the expensive route. If you don't wanna do that, go ahead and get yourself some uh, just regular uh, grated or shredded Parmesan cheese if you want. Okay, the next thing that we need for our pasta carbonara is a ham or bacon if you will. If you wanna call it bacon, that's fine. We need a ham, we need an Italian ham. So I'm going to be using this pancetta. And this is what I'm talking about. My grocery store is not stuck with the good, really good quality stuff or traditional stuff that is actually used in, in, in authentic cooking. Uh, we, we lack a little bit in that. So um, this is what I got. I did find it sliced, but it was a three ounce packet, real thin slice, and it was holy heck expensive. And I said, why? And I looked at this one and it's already chopped up for me. 
and uh, it was a lot less expensive. It was almost half the price. So I went ahead and I went with that and I got myself two packages. These are, I don't know if I mentioned how much this is, four ounces. So all together I've got eight ounces of a prosciutto chopped ham. I'm going to be needing three eggs for the cream part of the carbonara. I'm not gonna be using any cream. In traditional Italian carbonara, there's no cream use. There's nothing like that. It's just eggs. So I'm gonna be using two yolks. That's the yellow part. So I'm gonna separate the white from the yolk on two of the eggs. And on one of the eggs, I'm gonna use the whole egg. These are large eggs, by the way. You can use large or extra large. I'm, of course, I'm gonna be needing some salt. It would have been nice if I had some fresh garlic, but I don't. But I do have a garlic powder. Do not use garlic salt. You've already got salt in the tortillo. You don't want this to end up salty. You may use a little pinch of salt as you're cooking. If you feel like you need that, you can do that. Uh, and you're gonna need some olive oil. And then like I said, the water that's boiling will need some salt in it also. So these are my ingredients and they will be written down below. So if you didn't catch any of this or you decide to skip right over this, that's fine, it's gonna be down below. So let's get to uh, making our pasta. All right, so here I've got a pot of boiling water and I'm going to be adding some salt to the water. And then of course, my pasta. And what you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that it is separated. So make sure you fan it out like so. You can use a spoon to do so. Once you've got it all getting soft, then you can just push it down some more. Uh, not with your hand, obviously. Don't use your hand. Use a spoon or a spatula to do that. Cover it up and just let it boil for 8 to 10 minutes. Just come back, check it, and make sure that it is al dente. So that's what we're going to do. And now let's get to the uh, carbonara part. All right, I'm having some issues with my camera that keeps wanting to fall. It's not holding on very well, so we'll see what happens. I've got my my electric skillet here because I wanted y'all to be able to see here. The light on my stove went out, so uh, I need the light from above the, my island. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, olive oil, about a tablespoon, to my pan. You can use a smaller pan, obviously. You don't have to use this large skillet. And then I'm just gonna toss in my, my pancetta into uh, my skillet. You can see I want to use it over a little piece. Cost me enough that I don't want to waste any bit of it. Okay, there we go. And they have some nice little recipes on the back side of it, so I want to use that. I'm gonna save the that part. Okay, so we're just gonna get our pancetta in here and get it cooking. Now, like I said, you could use the bacon, the thick cut bacon, cut it up into little little bits. And then just throw it in here and then just cook it. You know, so it's properly cooked. So that's what we're doing. Now if I have some fresh garlic, I would throw the fresh garlic in here. Got a little bit of bits on the bottom because I cooked some chicken in here right before I made the right before doing this and I just cleaned it up a little bit. I didn't need to clean it up too much because I don't mind the flavors from the chicken. Because I mean, my family, we like to have meat. And I felt like, well, maybe this just wasn't gonna be enough. So I did make some chicken on the side, just in case. It's always good for leftovers if we don't eat it, but I cooked it just in case. So anyway, uh, this is my prosciutto cooking in there. My pasta's been cooking for about five minutes. I'm going to check it real quick right now. Doing great. I feel like it's going to need just three more minutes and it'll be done. The pasta that is. This smells so good. Yep. I can smell it, it smells so yummy. Okay, while it's doing more of it's cooking, uh, let's get some eggs separated. And so I'm gonna take a, a egg, egg whites separated from the yolk. A 
I really needed to start grating that Parmesan. So you might want to do that before you get any of this started. And then we're going to use one whole egg. And I'm going to put that with the yolks. These egg whites, I'm going to save them for breakfast for my honey. Okay, so I'm going to wash my hands. Be right back. with the one egg white. That bacon is popping. So we're going to get to grating that Parmesan as well. So let's get to it. I'll need a separate bowl just for that or a plate. Yep, yep, yep. Let me get one. I feel like part of there it is. Part of my cheese broke off. Okay, I'm gonna turn this bacon off because I don't want it to burn. I keep saying bacon, my pancetta. Look at that. I hardly made any fat in there, so that's a good thing. I'm going to turn this off completely. And I'm going to finally grate my Parmesan. It's going to take me a couple of minutes, then I'm going to check my pasta, and it's probably going to be done, so I will be back. All right, I'm back, and I've been uh, grating this five ounces of Parmesan. In the meantime, my pasta is done and I've gone ahead and drained it and I really should put it in my pancetta ASAP but let me show you I'm, uh, this is still a little bit left and look at how much let me show you how much that is look at all this so I'm just going to go ahead and grate this one bit and then I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, for topping and I think that's going to be good enough for our, my carbonara, for my pasta. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go ahead and uh, grate this other, unless I feel like, oh my God, we want more cheese in it. But I'm probably going to save that for another night. So let's get our pasta. I'm going to turn this on just a little bit on low. Throw my pasta in my pan with my pancetta. Let's get this over here. Try not to drop anything over here behind me so I make sure that I don't. I got a little bit of the pasta water which I'm going to pour in there and then I'm going to throw in my two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to use a pinch of salt. Just a pinch like that, a little pinch. Sprinkle it everywhere. That's all I need. If not, I don't need any, of course. And uh, some garlic powder to give it some garlicky flavor. It reminds me I've got some garlic bread in the oven. I'm gonna go and turn that off. So I forget it a lot of times when it burns on me when I buy that toast one. Not the long garlic bread, but the little Texas toast ones. I always end up burning them. Okay, there we go. Whoops, a little drizzle of olive oil. Whoa, I am just dropping everything. All right, let's toss this like so. Get it mixed up with the uh, bacon. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my God, just like that, it looks fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna turn this completely off because we're going to be adding the eggs and we don't want to cook the eggs at a point where they scramble. So we want to be really careful. So this is where this could actually turn into a fail. And if you're watching it, it's because it turned out okay. All right, a little bit more of this pasta water. Let's move this back so you can see like that. All right, and then I need to put some of that grated Parmesan 
into my eggs, like so. Blend that up. This is what makes our cream. So we don't need to add any cream to this. It's already melting and it's sticking together. And just the heat in here. A little more of the pasta water. And then we're just gonna mix it up into it. That was a lot of cheese going into that egg. <laughs> So I've got clumps here. Okay, this is turning out really well. Oh my gosh. And it looks so good. Let me make sure that cheese gets broken up. Oh my gosh. That smells so good. And if you're wondering how much of the pasta water I used, I filled about half a cup here, and as you can see, I just got a little bit. So it's about half a cup of the pasta water that I reserved on the side to add to this to help make it, you know, the cheese, make the cheese creamy once it's gotten melted in there. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to do to this. The only other thing is to serve it up. And of course, you can sprinkle some more Parmesan on top if you wish. And, uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and serve it up and see how it tastes. Look at how beautiful that is. It is so pretty. Add some more Parmesan on top. Look how beautiful. I'm going to be serving that up with some lovely garlic bread just like that let's take a little taste but i'm gonna take some from over here because i want to take a picture of that i want to see what it looks like and we're just going to twirl it around our fork we don't need a spoon just like that let's try it oh my gosh delicious and i'm not just saying that this is really, really delicious. Okay, I hope you like my easy, somewhat expensive. It's your choice how you go with your the cost of your ingredients. But I hope you like my recipe. I hope that you will try it. And if you have your own recipe for pasta carbonara that you'd like to share, if you have a link to a blog or to a video, please go ahead and link it below. Let me know what you think. Leave some nice comments. Please give me a big old thumbs up. Bon appetito, subscribe, and as always, enjoy.